All right. Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Friday, November 1st, and we got a lot to get to. Before we do, though, just want to take a minute and really thank you guys for all the feedback, all the engagement uh, from the video I did earlier in the week. In fact, that's the reason I said I got to drop some for the weekend because there's so much going on. Got to make sure I hook up my peeps because you guys gave a lot of love, a lot of love. Mr. Amidu, Four Cubis, Alan PM, Devil Blue. I could call them out names all day. CDCDX, whatever. All these. Blaze with a bunch of numbers. Mitchell Brothers, Chad, Martinez. I, mean, every, I don't want to leave anybody out. There's so many. And I, I make sure I do. I check out all the comments because it helps me cover some of the things also that you guys may want to talk about. And uh, again, you don't have to agree with it. You don't can't, you shouldn't. In fact, you shouldn't agree with everything. That's the beauty of markets. There's a buyer, there's a seller. But what we're trying to do is eliminate the misconceptions and narrow down some facts so we could help each other find some plus EV spots. Now, with that said, we're on fire of late at, a, at, a, at the perfect time to, to start doing these. I've won 11 of the last 12 bets, uh, number one in profit last three days, last seven days. That doesn't matter because we don't care about the short term. There's going to be a lot of randomness. We're going to win. We're going to lose. What matters is when in doubt, zoom out. And what matters most is we've turned the profit eight of the last nine years. But got to be honest, because there's not enough transparency in this industry. You got to keep it real. Got to keep it real. And I'm having to lose in 2024 after increasing bankroll by 80% last year. I'm having to lose in 2024 with only two months left. So when the dust settles, I may say I've won eight of the last 10 years instead of nine of the last 10. Either way, I'm proud of those results, but we have to keep it real. Because new betters that are entering the space that actually do want to do it as an investment vehicle and not for entertainment, they have to know what they're getting into. They have to have reasonable expectations and understand that even during their most profitable years, they're going to have to overcome a lot of negative runs. Even when they're plus EV and could profit over a decade, they will have losing years, not months, that they're going to have to deal with. Not everyone's built for that. In fact, few are, which is why 99.5% of sports bettors have negative lifetime earnings. But there is that 0.5% that has proven it can be done. And the bottom line is we're here trying to get it done together. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to dive right in and get as much information to you as possible. With that said, make sure you dive in and and follow back with the uh, when I do the last call, Saturday last call, Sunday last call, especially Sunday with the NFL, because I share the Wong teasers. Remember, a couple of years ago, the market became a lot more efficient in the NFL with the Wong teasers. They started blocking those. So I had to come up with the alternative. Find a better way to use them. And that's exactly what I've done. After a few years of turning profit with it, put it out there. I've shared it, shared the gold. And if you followed along with zero handicapping, it doesn't matter what the matchups are. You can wake up an hour before kickoff. Actually, 30 minutes before kickoff would be better. And all you got to do is make sure those teams fit the parameters. Here's what your results are. Last week, 3-0. The week before that, 3-0. The week before that, 4-0. The week before that, 5-0. So over the last four weeks, you've gone 15-0 without a single handicap without even caring what the teams are, where they're playing the game, what the weather is, none of that matters. And then we started in week two, went three and two, week three, four and two, week four, five and two. In other words, between week two and week eight, we are now 27 and six, up over 20 positions without even handicapping. That's plus EV. That's betting numbers, not teams. That's becoming a trader and not a, a, a better. That's looking for signal and avoiding the noise, and only firing when the signal pops. That's it. All emotions taken out of the equation because I don't have an opinion. My opinion and biases mean nothing. The only thing that matters, does it fit my parameters, and does the trade signal fire? That's it. If it does, we fire. If it doesn't, we don't. It's that freaking simple. So let's start off with today. I've got some action for you for Friday night, I believe. Uh, what do I got for Friday? Let me see. Oh, I got the under, under Boise State and San Diego State. 
Dude, we started betting that under, I think at 59, 58 and a half, 58, 57 and a half, 57. Probably can't get that number right now. But before kickoff, you may get a lot of public money over, may push it back up a little bit. Um, I think we extracted some of the value, though, on that total. We also went over in the Georgia State team total, over Georgia State team total at 19, 19 and a half. Now, move over to some of the college football action for Saturday. Uh, Arizona State, Arizona State game 363 got steamed multiple times yesterday. In fact, I was surprised it got hit because it got steamed earlier. The, the, the opener was one, got hit there, went to two, got hit there, two and a half, three, got hit there. Then you saw a little resistance at plus three the other way. You're usually going to see that. When it dropped to two and a half, boom, they hit it again yesterday. Got it to three, added three with juice. So a lot of love on the Arizona State side. A lot of love, a lot of love. Now, uh, first half total that came in today, Indiana and Michigan State over 26, 26 and a half, 27. First half team total in, uh, first half total, excuse me, game total, Indiana, Michigan State. Saturday, I'll share some team totals. Sunday, some team totals on last call. A uh, couple other games we could look at. Wisconsin, Wisconsin at plus four. Washington at plus three. Also the over 55 and a half in that Washington game. Today, I'm just giving you nothing but, 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 but winners. We're not even really handicapping. There's not a lot of time. You know, the weekend's here. Just looking through what I can share with you guys. What can I give you? What can I give you? Oh, NBA tonight, right? Denver Nuggets under, under 219 and a half. Ottawa Senators plus 160 or better. Yeah, we got some good action. Anna Blinkova. Anna Blinkova plus 115. Tennis even. Giving it to y'all. Now, got to jump into some of that uh, UFC action as well. Went on Wager Talk today this morning. I shared two plays. I gave out Jamie Lynn Horth. She's good up to minus 300. She's coming in off her first UFC loss, her first loss as a professional against Petrovic, who's coming in off her first UFC win. Petrovic's been favored in both her UFC fights. Chalky favor. She's underperformed the betting market. A lot of hype. I think this is a huge step up for her. I don't think late Jamie Lynn Horth opened the minus 200 by accident. I laid it about minus 190, minus 200. I think she's good up to minus 300 wins that fight uh, three out of four times. And then Rodrigo Nascimento. Oh, I liked him as well. Um, bottom line here, I think when you look at the strength of schedules, they're almost identical, almost identical, meaning the opponent's win percentage. But most wouldn't think that. I think uh, the narrative is that Nascimento's had the softer um, strength of schedule. And that's just not the case. In fact, even when you look at the opponents they've beaten, the opponents they lost against, winning percentage is almost exact as Romanoff's. Difference in this fight, we're going to have a nice five-inch reach advantage. We're coming in off of loss. We're coming in with the momentum, having won three of her last four. Compared to Romanoff's, who's lost three of his last four. Remember, Romanoff came to the UFC as a big heavyweight with a lot of hype, undefeated. Remember, they needed some heavyweights up there at the top to challenge. They thought he was going to, they were going to fast track him up. But as they went up the strength of schedule, just couldn't get it done. And uh, I think this is another step up for him, believe it or not. Now, Cemento not getting the respect he deserves. And uh, we're getting a ton of value because he's coming in off that knockout loss. Otherwise, he's a minus 150 favorite, at least in this fight. Uh Let's talk about the co-main event, Rose, Nama Yunus, and Aaron Blanchfield real quickly. Here's why. I'll tell you straight out. I like the Blanchfield side. I did immediately. I just thought uh, with Rose, her power just hasn't carried the flyweight. We have a small sample size of only three fights, but those finishes came at strawweight. At flyweight, she's been going to a decision. I believe if Blanchfield's able to implement her wrestling, kind of like we, we, we've seen in the past with Rose, when she went up against Esparza, and Esparza only had two takedowns as well. But it's the, it's the attempts. It's the attempts. And I think Esparza attempted 11, 11 takedowns in that fight against Rose. That's what, uh, what's it called? It's going to have to do Blanchfield. And Blanchfield's got no problem doing that. I mean, she averages 4.5 takedowns per five minutes. Or per 15 minutes, excuse me. So those aren't attempts. Those are actually secured takedowns so it's wise guys are against me i'll tell you that i like the blanchfield side sharp money against me on the rose nama side 
Now let's talk a little NFL action real quickly. Look at some NFL before I get you guys out of here and make sure you go down, smash that like button, get some comments, some engagement. That's why we're here. That's what brought me back on Friday with all this stuff to do. I got UFC tomorrow. I got college football tonight. We got college football, NBA, all of that NFL. And I even did a wager talk today, but love you guys, man. The support is awesome. And I want to be here to try to help you avoid all the misconceptions, all the nonsense that's out there. The most important thing, the best takeaway, man, because the truth is, you know, picks are going to win, picks are going to lose. And in the short term, there's a lot of randomness involved. Long-term numbers don't lie. That's the bottom line. I'll put my numbers up against anyone who's documented the results. Um, and with that said, the best takeaway you can have is bet size, bet size, bet size. The majority of bettors, almost all over bet their edge, even if they have one. Almost every recreational better over bets their bankroll. I mean, that's the bottom line. Again, you can determine your risk of ruin. The percent, the probability that you will lose your bankroll. Again, it takes 400 units to get to 20% risk of ruin, where you will double your bankroll eight to 10 times. You will lose it two out of 10 times. Kind of what I'm working with. What did I say? I work with a 20% risk of ruin and look where we're at eight to 10 years if I lose this year. And that's what we're working with the 20% risk of ruin. So I was comfortable with that. If I could double my bankroll eight times, only lose it twice, I'm comfortable with that. I have the, 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 the discipline to produce profit with those amazing results. So the best thing you can do is bet size correctly. Unit, break down those units. Go to 1,000 units if you want a 1% risk of ruin. That's correct. You could have a 1% risk of ruin where you will guarantee double your bankroll 99 out of 100 times with an edge, with an edge. If you've proven you have an edge. And what you need that is a thousand freaking units. So if you're betting a hundred dollars a unit, you need a hundred dimes, a hundred dimes. But who's with a hundred dimes is betting a hundred dollars a unit. In fact, most betters have a thousand dollar bankroll and they're betting a hundred dollars a unit. You know what the risk of ruin is? If you're betting 10% per play, you know what the risk of ruin is when you're betting 5% even just 5%. Your risk of ruin is so high. It's almost mathematically impossible that you won't go broke. It's almost a mathematical impossibility that you won't lose all your money if you're betting five, seven, 10% of your bankroll per play. It's just not sustainable. It's not possible. Again, it's just a matter of time, your mathematical certainty to go broke. So you got a thousand dollar bankroll. You want to stay in the game? You bet $10 a freaking unit. $10 a unit, you want to stay in the game. And that's still not at a 1% risk of ruin. Again, you would have to have 10 dimes betting $10 units. I'm telling you to do it with only with a dime. And so few are going to do it. They want to bet 50. They want to bet 100. You need it fast. We need it fast. Patience. Patience. That's what costs most people money. In fact, the difference between wealthy people and poor people is wealthy people realize it takes patience. It's time in the market, not timing it. Poor people try to time the market. We try to make the big score, be right. Rich people are like, let time in it make my money. Let me buy some stock in Tesla and hold it for 15 years. Let the smartest people on the planet work for me. Let me buy this crypto and hold it for 10 years. Let the smartest programmers and coders on the planet work for me and increase the value. That's how wealthy people look at it. I grew up poorer than probably 99% of the people watching this right now. So believe me, my mentality was bring me the big score. Give me the big score and then I'll start saving money. Once I have a, a, a give me 50 dimes, then I'll bet the right way. Dude, I found out one thing I realized. If I can't make money with a $1,000 bankroll, I'm not making it with a $100,000 bankroll. That's the bottom line. If you can't profit with a dime, you ain't profiting with a hundred of them. In fact, do yourself the favor. Lose that thousand instead of the hundred thousand. So at the end of the day, I love you guys. I, I, I want nothing but good for you. And I would rather you waste, spend your money on your family, on your kids, on your loved ones to help. There's so many people that need help out there. Just go into a children's hospital, man. Look at those families. Look at those kids that need help. And instead we throw it out and give it to the bookie on negative EV shit, chasing stupid shit for what? For what? 
Again, if you're going to do it for entertainment, that's okay. Have fun with it. You won't hurt yourself. Like all entertainment. Entertainment costs money. You like movies? You're going to spend money. You like going shooting pool? That costs money. You like going to strip clubs? That costs money. Entertainment's cost. So if entertainment is betting and watching sports, go into it knowing it's probably going to cost you some money. But guess what? You probably will win sometimes too and make money. That's okay. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. But if you're actually going to use it as an investment vehicle, then you owe it to yourself and your loved ones to treat it like a business so that it pays you like a business. Because we know when we're doing it wrong, bro. If you're an adult, you know what, what's healthy and what's not healthy, right? I know how to get a six pack. I know how to get jacked. I'm not jacked. I don't have a six pack because I don't have the discipline. It's not because I don't have the, the blueprint. It's not because I don't have the genetics or all that nonsense. We make up every excuse. It's just because I don't have the discipline to eat like you're supposed to, to work out like you're supposed to, to live the lifestyle you're supposed to, to look like that. It's the bottom line. And it's the same thing with sports betting. What are you doing every single day where you deserve to be in that 0.5% that actually makes their money in this market? And if you're betting bad teasers, throwing in stupid parlays, betting bad numbers, making pizza bets for action, none of those, act, none of those reflect what a winning sports better does. So why would you be one? Again, you got to have some self-awareness. This is coming from someone that managed to lose multiple bankrolls with winning information, meaning I had the best information in my hands and I managed to go broke multiple times because I had no concept of risk management. So please, please, please <clears throat> keep it real with yourself. Are you doing it for fun? Or are you doing it for money? If you're doing it for money, treat it like a business. It'll pay you like a business. Oh, somebody NFL before I get you out of here. Sorry. See, my mind just, I go off on these 10. Did we go over this already? I'm not even sure. Let me just give you some already. I know we like the Chargers. We like the Chargers. Now that line dropped. I know there's a lot of Cleveland love. Remember that look ahead opened four and a half, went to three and a half, two and a half, two. Dude, the line's way, way too much. I get it. So much love for Cleveland. But any value has been extracted. Now, this is just way too big of an adjustment. You went through four. You went through three. Now we're down to, to two eh, chargers and over in that game. Uh, over got away from us a little bit, opened around 40, got up to around 42 and a half, 43. But I think this total is closer to 45 is the true number. Uh, Baltimore minus nine and a half. One of the groups I bet with hit that. I, I haven't hit it myself. Uh, a couple short plays that I also didn't bet, but another mover gave me, gave me Indianapolis, gave me Carolina, gave me the under in Jacksonville, Philadelphia. A uh, couple other short totals over, over. 48 Miami Buffalo and uh, over 48 and a half Rams Seattle. So over in Miami Buffalo, over in Rams Seattle. So <clears throat> that's some of the college football tonight, the weekend, MMA, NFL. I'm going to look at the comments. Hopefully you guys let me know what you want to cover and talk about. I'll try to drop one again next week, maybe two next week. We'll see how the response goes. If you're able to profit off the information, do some damage. I love you guys. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless.